Well, well, well. I have managed to return. Uh, Verdstrom, at your service. Your local rogue caster has managed to go and snipe another Div 2 game uh, whose caster bailed out. So, uh, working outside of the system, a uh, victory for me once again. So, we are moving on to Tomb of the Spider Queen. This is a best of one Chair League match, Division 2, between Volume Zero and Gate Tez Gaming, I believe is how it's pronounced. That's G A T E T E S. So, I'm going to call it Gate Tez, as I know no other way to pronounce it. And so the first ban is going to go over to Volume Zero. Uh, if anybody here uh, watched the previous Best of Three I just cast, that match ended on Tomb of the Spider Queen. Um, this one is going to take place only on Tomb of the Spider Queen, so we'll see whether or not um, these Division Two teams run the same or different strategies as each other. We go ahead and see the Rag Ban coming out, feared at basically all levels, down from the lowest of amateur leagues all the way to top tier HGC play. Ragnaros is just a force to be reckoned with. Um, wherever you go. So not at all surprised to see a rag ban coming out here. Uh, let's see whether or not the Lucio ban is also as prevalent um, as it was in the past three games I cast. Uh, once again, in case anybody is watching this one and not the other one, I will mention that Lucio, we see the ban being hovered right now, actually saw an increase in win rate even after his nerfs, just because the nerfs to Malfurion actually wound up just making Lucio that much more powerful in comparison to the other supports. This isn't the first time we've seen this effect. Um, this happened with Rhaegar back in the Ray God days a long time ago when he got reworked. Uh, Malfurion when he was reworked not too terribly long ago as well. Um, where you just see these supports that are so amazingly powerful that they really just overshadow every single other support in the game. So that appears to be the position that Lucio is in right now. So they're just going ahead and getting rid of him right off the bat as well. So now the first pick, uh, pick of the game will be going over to Volume Zero. It will be interesting to see if they go for the general meta team comp, uh, prioritizing something like ETC or Malfury and just good, kind of innocuous picks that don't really commit to something too much, but at the same time are strong in basically every team comp, or if they have something more orthodox planned, it is just going to be the Malfury and pickup. Um, nice and safe here coming out for Volume Zero. Now we get to see what the response is going to be from Gate Tez Gaming. If they want something, um, just once again, if they go for the more cookie cutter options, just go, okay, we'll just pick up ETC. Um, in the past, um, I will obviously, I mentioned this a lot in the previous game I cast, but I haven't mentioned it in this one, so I will say again that Tychus would also be very highly prioritized, but after the auto attack range nerf, as well as the change to the way that that's the stuff functioned, um, he's not been near as popular. I think I've only seen him in one game since then. Um, so Tychus, uh, really under the radar right now. We'll have to wait and see what Gate Tez Gaming decides to go with here. They could uh, go ahead and try to secure another support if there's one they really want to go for so that it can't be banned away and a support choke doesn't happen in the second phase. So they go Sylvanas. We're actually seeing very similar compositions to what I saw in the last game on this map. Um, going Sylvanas for kind of like the win more push alongside of the Webweaver's composition. Uh, I'm personally, even though I'm a big fan of Sylvanas and I actually play her when I end up on this map from time to time if I'm filling and not on tank, I do have mixed feelings about it. I don't think it's as powerful in Infernal Shrines and Battlefield of Eternity. But we'll see whether or not it works out. We see a Kael'thas pick. Uh, dude, your photo is too huge, and I can't see the pics of the blue team. Uh, sorry about that, bruh. Um, normally, I like to leave this up so you guys can see my lovely face, even while I'm commentating the draft. Uh, but just for you, I will take this down um, so that you don't have to stare at my ugly mug and you can see the full draft. Um, so we see, as I was mentioning, we see the Kael'thas pick coming out uh, for Gate Tez Gaming. Um... Uh, kind of interesting, Kael'thas not really popular ever since his uh, old days of terror where Living Bomb just spread indefinitely, no questions asked. Um, so interesting to see the Kael'thas come out. Uh, I don't know if that's a pocket pick, a favorite. Normally I would prefer something like Gul'dan on Tomb of the Spider Queen as it does enable a lot. Uh, just generally better wave clear. Flamestrike is powerful, but it's kind of on a, like a more narrow area, and he doesn't have the spammability of Fell Flame to help deal with those big waves being helped with Web Weavers. Not to say it's a bag pick, it's just something interesting. We'll see whether or not it works out for them. And we see ETC Tassadar. So the Tassadar really is kind of indicative here of the probability of them going for something like a Vala or another strong auto attack. We actually see that Gate Tez Gaming is realizing the same thing here and are hovering the Vala ban. I uh, don't want to have to deal with a double support Vala combo. Uh, the ETC also, as I mentioned before, is a good pairing with uh, Malfurion. The power slide into Root is a tried and true combo. Difficult to deal with and easy to pull off. So a uh, strong early rotation coming in from Volume Zero. Um, so uh, good on good on them for having this for having this game plan worked out. They came into it knowing what they wanted to do, even though this wasn't their map pick. So we get to see what the response is going to be, what their ban is going to be away from Gate Tez Gaming and how they decide to follow it up. Okay, so they go for the Johanna. I was about to mention that I think that a Warrior Choke might be the correct choice. Um, Johanna is very strong on this map uh, because of just the general strength of her wave clear. And so... Uh 
I like the Johanna ban. It does kind of narrow what they can go for. And then also, even though I don't know if it's been done as much since the Tassadar changes, but there have been previous times where I've actually seen solo Tassadar's bot lane um, just because of your ability to constantly dump your shield on yourself and use Wave Clear with Psionic Storm. It actually makes him an okay solo laner. So I'm wondering if they might go for that and have some like really high damage backline or CC follow-up, something like a Thrall for the four-man rotation. Since they are banning out Johanna, it makes me think they are going to go for a more aggressive early game four-man rotation, and they don't want to deal with the Iron Skin and her ability to just walk out. So this is the first variant that I've seen since the changes were made. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they decide to go Taunt variant. That's what, I'm, that's what it's looking like looking at the rest of their team comp and the fact that they don't actually have any other front line. They could go for something like a Muradin in that last pick and try out a Varian build after the changes were made. I forget what the exact buff was to Colossus Mesh. Um, yesterday I had the patch pulled up so I could look at all of it. Uh, I may go ahead and do that now. I won't be able to talk about it at this exact moment because I have to make sure it's loaded up. But I will mention what changes were made to Varian. I fully expect it. I know what the taunt changes were. I fully expect it to be a taunt Varian. The most important thing is that Warbringer, not the taunt build per se, but Warbringer in particular was changed so that now instead of turning the 75% slow into a uh, stun, it actually just increases the slow to 85%, which is actually pretty substantial, even though you say, oh, it's only a 10% increase in terms of actual proportions, the actual effectiveness of the slow is much higher. Um, so we'll have to see if they decide to go with Taunt Varian, even though it was nerfed, or if they go for something different. So I do have it pulled up here. Um, so Colossus Smash damage was increased from 75% bonus damage to 100%, and Twin Blades of Fury damage reduction was reduced from 25 to 20. So we'll have to see whether or not um, they go for uh, the, just the tank build, despite the fact that it was nerfed, or if they try something different. And we actually see Gul'dan Valera. That's not something I was expecting picked up for Volume 0. Maybe they were really hoping to get the Vol and they didn't get that, so they go with the Gul'dan instead. Maybe this is going to be the... Uh, Maybe this is going to be the auto attack laser beam Tassadar I saw Horse Pants playing last night, where you don't really worry so much about the fact that your build works good with auto attackers and just try to be an assassin on your own right. So the Tassadar pick is really interesting here. We'll have to see whether or not that works out for them. I like the idea of Valyra here, especially now that Varian isn't as good as just like a counter initiator to stealth heroes because he doesn't have that stun on Warbringer. So we'll have to see if the pick works out for them. And we see a Nubarak coming in for volume, or not for volume, for Gaytes Gaming, my guess is that's meant to be a counter pick to the Gul'dan, and Valyra is also pretty heavily ability damage oriented, so I like the Nubarak pick here, um, normally I only see it in response to Li Ming, so we'll have to see whether or not this works out for him, and also since they have gone with a more traditional solo frontliner, uh, it's not out of the question that Jurassic might actually go for a different variant build, which will be the first time I've seen it in a long time. Usually the early game talents are kind of telling, so as the game progresses and until we hit level 10, I will kind of give updates as it were as to whether or not I think he will be going in that direction. We'll have to wait and see, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and get right into the Nexus, and we see that for Volume 0, we have Magnetic on ETC, Thing 1 on Valera, Sleepy Bear on Gul'dan, Shy Guy on Tassadar, and Tay on Malfurion, and over for Gate Tez Gaming, we have a Jurassic on Varian, Pint on Kael'thas, Sylvanas being played by Repulsion666, and Jindro on Anubarak, and RVLO, or Ruvlo, however it's pronounced, on Rhaegar. And we will be getting uh, on to Tomb of the Spider Queen shortly. Everyone is loading in real quick. A quick shout out to Kael'thas on Pint. I'm not entirely sure that that's a Fire Emblem 7 reference, but it might be. So if it is, that's awesome. Uh, awesome. If it's not, just ignore I said anything. And so now we're getting on to the next. I just want to take a quick peek to see what Varian is going to pick up. Ho see, he does go High King's Quest. That leads me to believe he is going to go the auto attack build. Uh, it's very uncommon to go High King's Quest if you're going to go Taunt Varian. It's also possible, uh, since that um, was changed pretty shortly after his release to apply to base damage instead of attack damage overall, that he could be going the Colossus build as well. Usually you see either the Overpower talent or the Lion's Maw talent if you're going for the Warbringer, not the Warbringer, excuse me, the Colossus Smash build. This leads me to think it's going to be auto attack, but I can't know for sure. We'll have to wait and see what the level 10 talent is, or if he goes second wind at seven. That's also a little telling. It's very uncommon for Colossus Smash builds to go second wind. Um, so we will have to, we'll have to wait and see about that. Uh, Tassadar, uh, doing a good job there scouting with his Oracle. Has actually yet to pick his level 1 talent. Does go for Psy Infusion. So probably not going the auto attack build. 
instead just focusing on helping his team wave clear. And Jindro initiated on by ETC, spreading the bomb to Malfang Gul'dan. Gotta be careful about that. Uh, thing 1 initiating on Sylvanas, who was trying to jump in on the back line, does manage to escape using Haunting Wave. Uh, we do notice that it is Frog Rock coming out for ETC, so they really almost have like one support and two half supports there. Now, Furion being kind of an off support combined with the extra healing from Frog Rock that will come in in the late game will do a lot to help them deal with the Kale Boss poke. Uh, looks like uh, Jurassic's in a little bit of trouble. Gets initiated on by Thing 1's Valera. Counter engaged though by Injindro. Almost gets caught in the root. Does do a good job of pathing to make sure he doesn't get hit by it. And this is actually the exact, um, when I was talking about how I've laned before against Solo Tassadar, it was actually Tassadar versus Sylvanas, because as Sylvanas, I could not stop the Tassadar. And things might be different now that Tassadar was changed and functions differently, has the longer cooldown on his um, shield, as well as a generally weaker auto attack. So we'll see whether or not uh, that works out for them. It's actually Varian is kind of rotated down. Looks like there's kind of a mob mobile bot lane right now. Gates Gaming not quite sure what they're going to go with uh, as their solo lane. It has currently switched it to Varian. A lot of pressure on the Sleepy Bear. Tay doing his best to heal him up with Mal. Uh, still thinking a lot of poke from the Kel'Thas. He did go Convection. And uh, we see Dreadful Wake coming out for Sylvanas. That is the relatively new talent. It was a several patches ago. But some people, if they, if they don't play Sylvanas or don't really watch Heroes, may not know that Paralysis, which used to increase the duration of her trait by 75%, was changed to Dreadful Wake, which, as you can see there on the screen, um, increases the duration of Black Arrow to 7 seconds and restores mana when it makes contact. So just generally good pushing ability there. Uh, can be used to lock down the minions for a very long time. Uh, thing 1 playing really aggressive that gets the Garot onto uh, Anubarak. Not enough damage, though. Still too early to see these ridiculous wombo combos. Also, uh, we do have, uh, for those of you who don't remember, in addition to the fact that Anubarak has Dampin' Magic, he was changed a few patches ago to also have 25% or 25 spell armor, meaning he takes 25% reduced damage from abilities. So, uh, just a little more back and forth. EXP lead very slightly going over to volume zero. Not really enough to be impactful. Uh, is caught up really quickly by just clearing the rest of the wave. So, unless one team gets a really strong pick, um, if ETC initiates with a power slide and there's good follow up, it's very unlikely either team will get a kill. Uh, Pint doing his best to poke away with that uh, flame strike, time, uh, trying to stack convection as quick as he can. Take a quick peek, see how far he is. And eh, not too much. Um, he's uh, not even halfway there yet, but as long as he plays it safe, he should be fine. Uh, oh, wow, good cleanse coming out from Rhaegar, allowing an Uberak to. Uh, use his burrow charge to get away there. It was looking a little uh, iffy for him. He did end up getting silenced and was having some difficulty. We have to remember that Garad is like a 2.25 second silence, if I'm correct, after the slight um, change to it where it does less damage but has a longer silence duration. Really aggressive play here coming out from thing one. Um, I, if, if I were a Valir, I would not be that brave just walking right up to the enemy team. Like Even if you are stealth, um, Kael'thas, Anubarak, and Rhaegar all have various means of revealing, so... Aggressive play coming in here from Volume Zero, looking for some early kills or early damage. Uh, Valir being healed up to full health by Malfurion. Let's take a quick peek bot lane, see what exactly is going on. And here we see uh, Tassadar at work, um, even after the change to his auto attack, where it does do less damage than it did prior to the rework. Uh, it still isn't enough to apply a little bit of pressure. And we see that he went uh, Kala's Light, which is the uh, armor on expiration on his shield. And we see that the first Web Weaver phase does go over to Volume Zero. Uh, this is very important for them. Getting the first Web Weaver makes it a lot more difficult for Gates Gaming, or Gate Tez Gaming, excuse me, to snowball with a Sylvanas. So good on them to get that first Web Weaver, try to get some value out of it. Um, it's unlikely they'll get a whole lot more than a couple walls. The early Web Weavers are pretty easy to kill, especially when you have a team with pretty high wave clear, like with Sylvanas and Kel'Thas. I want to point out quickly that uh, Sylvanas actually went with the win, taking the increased range on with the fire. Um, that's not one I see a whole lot. Uh, but we'll see whether or not she gets value out of it, just wanting to play as safe as possible, realizing there's a lot of strong initiation between ETC, Valera, and Malfurion. So Tessadar right now pushing into Jurassic on the Varian. He's going to have a really hard time clearing the wave, really without any range means to do so, without throwing out lines work from time to time. Can't really do a whole lot about it. We do see uh, Irvlo, or however it is pronounced, rotating down to deal with this Web Weaver. Uh, helping just with the AoE from Lightning Bond, as well as his uh, pretty strong auto attack ever since the buff a while back. To clear that, so we see the front wall actually doesn't quite go down, although it is exhausted of all of its ammo. Taking a peek mid lane, it looks like uh, Injindro's in a bit of trouble here. Is he going to go down? He is. 
Hailfoss doing his best to apply pressure to the back line, but it was not enough. Just even with the spell armor, the pressure from cooldown was too much for him to deal with, and it didn't end up going down. Uh, Thing one playing really far up front, knowing that it does have Sinister Strike to help get away. So that is going to be the web weaver fee is going down. Uh, one kill and let's see, one tower, two towers in favor. So not a huge web weaver wave. Um, it is nice to get that exp though. That being said, Gate Tez Gaming does have 57 gems of their own. So that if they can get kind of a foothold here, they will be able to turn in themselves and try to start getting some Sylvanas value. Uh, Sylvanas has got an unstable poison to help with the wave clear. Uh, both during the push and against the web weavers. I like seeing that more so than the barb shot. I don't think it's as much value on this map, even though it can help with wave clear on its own right. And we do see that um, even though they don't have enough gems, Volume Zero is turning in as much as they can just to make sure that they don't lose them if they end up dying. At the same time, they're going for a flank on Jurassic and Repulsion. Uh, Jurassic in a lot of trouble. It looked like he's going to be gone there. I just don't see how he escapes. There's the root from Malfurion. It's another kill uh, going over in favor of Volume Zero. Uh, luckily for Gate Tez Gaming, Sylvanas was there to pick up the gems, and so they still have enough to turn in. Uh, it looks like Rhaegar was going top lane to attempt to turn in uh, what was uh, sealed off by Thing 1 on Valera. So good split there from Volume Zero, being able to flank and get a kill while still defending one of the points. That being said, it's currently 3v2 here, so they do have to be careful. Yeah, ETC initiating on Rhaegar, taking a lot of damage, tries to get away, but ends up getting body blocked by his own teammate and goes down. Those gems are just sitting there in the corner, and Jintro, is he going to be able to pick them up? No, he's not. That's 27 gems, if I counted correctly, gone. Maybe another nine more. The only remotely good thing coming out of this is that Pin is getting a lot of stacks on Flame Strike. He already has Convection completed. Apart from that, losing that many gems is pretty punishing. They now no longer have enough until they clear another wave to turn in. Uh, Tin is hit by Volume Zero, initiating on Anubarak. Man, the CC lock is real. Just the power slide by ETC followed up by the silence from Valera, and then the root from Alfurian is just too much to deal with. A really strong combo, even showing this early by Volume Zero. Gates has got to, they've got to get it together if they don't want to keep getting in trouble. But it's just not, it doesn't look like it's happening. Another initiation, but man, the flame strike damage is real. The the fact that Convection is stacked this early alongside of Burning Flesh with just eight percent additional health of uh, or eight percent max health to. If there are two more heroes caught in the blast, it's just, man, it looks like it took half of Valyria's health in one hit. But once again, we just see Jurassic being a little too far ahead. Does have level 10. Is going to be Twin Blades, as I predicted. Uh, Valyria having to use Smoke Bomb to help to stay away, alive. Uh, Tay taking some pressure on the back line. And Jindra popping his ultimate using the Scarab Swarm to help de-push a little bit. But now he doesn't have it up for when the uh, when we were actually on the lanes. Uh, Kelthos doing his best to kind of poke it out, but is out of mana and is forced to retreat. So Vaughn is trying to clear the bot lane. Jurassic initiated on yet again. Ancestral comes out to try to keep him alive. I may have been a little overzealous. It looked like he had already made it out. Uh, so I don't know if that was the correct Ancestral there, but it was just kind of a safety precaution, trying to make sure they didn't lose any more members. Pint is now back and does have uh, Flame Strike damages available, as well as Phoenix to help clear the wave if he wanted to. Um, if I were him, I probably would have burned the Phoenix already and helped depush this lane. Um, is he going to do it? He's going to burn a Flame Strike. Uh, and Jindra gets initiated on. I didn't even see that Jurassic was really far up trying to auto attack the Web Weaver. Stays alive for a while thanks to the help of Second Wind, but ends up going down. And this is just staggered death after staggered death for Gates Gaming. It's not looking good for them. Just a super strong initiation wombo between Malf, ETC, and Valera is pretty too much for them to handle. Uh, they look like they're trying to get some level of counter push though. Sylvanas managing to clear the bot wall, but is unable to get any damage on the fort as Shy Guy is rotated down and is using um, Psionic Storm to help clear that wave. And so things are not looking too good for Gatez Gaming. That being said, it's only a one level difference. It's not the end of the world. Um, there's still plenty of opportunity for a comeback here. They have yet to lose a keep, and they also have Sylvanas. Um, who, apart from being Queen of the Banshees, is also the Queen of taking a small advantage and turning it into a huge one. They should be careful. I guess no one on their team has played StarCraft. They do not spot the Shimmer. Uh, maybe they did Thing 1 using Haunted Wave. Uh, ETC jumps in. Three-man Mosh Pit. The Ghoul Dan damage coming out with Corruption. Followed by Sonic Storm Twilight Dream. They are just eviscerated. Three for nothing. Bruiser stolen away. That is a one and a half level lead now in favor of Volume Zero. A few of them should go play some games versus Protoss so that they know what the Shimmer looks like. Uh, <laughs> I, I know it's a, uh, I know that it can be hard to see sometimes, but I've got friends in silver and gold who uh, do a pretty good job of spotting out the Shimmer. So you got to work on that. If you're not used to playing against Stealthies, just go. Uh, wait till the Nova Brawl rolls around and just play it until your eyes bleed. You got to get used to that. Or you're going to get punished every time if you don't spot the Scout. 
Uh, so good play there from Volume Zero, running in, stealing away that Bruiser. The three-man mosh pit was solid, easy kills. And it, things aren't looking great for uh, Gaytez Gaming, I've got to say. Um, even though it was just a small lead, as we've seen the entire game, Volume Zero is really good at just turning one kill into another. Uh, Jurassic all by himself here is uh, 1v2. That being said, uh, Twin Blades variant does have the potential to kind of deal with that. Let's take a quick look at um, High King's Quest. Doesn't have anything finished yet. Has no takedowns. Only 11 globes gathered. After four more autos on heroes, we'll have that slight buff to his auto attack damage. Uh, but that at the moment, he's not getting a lot of value out of that. So uh, really got to work on uh, trying to get some picks, trying to collect those globes so that he can start actually doing some damage. Uh, five main rotation now coming out from Gaytez Game, and we realize that every time they've gotten separated, they've gotten blasted for it, so they're just trying to keep things safe. They should really start looking for a turn in now, um, but it looks like it's going to go over to Volume Zero. I'm not sure why they cleared the wave before the turn. Maybe they were looking for boss, seeing as how Kael'thas was rotating up. That's actually going to be a Web Weaver coming in for Volume Zero, and the fort is going down. Valera, if you saw on the minimap, was pushing through that bot wave. It looks like it's going to be finished off by Acidar Psionic Storm. And so that's Web Weavers on all three keeps. The front walls are still up, which will be a little um, helpful for hopefully protecting them. But they've got to realize that it's going to be level 16 soon for Volume Zero, who's up almost a full three levels. So you've got to be careful now after Gate Test Game and got to clear these Web Weavers as quick as you can. Did a good job already of applying pressure to this mid one by the rest of the team's not there. Valera Havers on the back again. Is she seen? And they're backing up. They know something's up. Valera jumps in. Two man mosh pit. Uh, cleanse onto Anubarak, who is able to. Uh, oh, wow. I'm sorry. I'm trying to commentate what's happening, but there's just so much going on. Uh, we saw Varen was also in the back line. Ends up getting obliterated by Valera. As I was mentioning, the impale from Anubarak interrupted the mosh pit, but not soon enough. Sylvan is still going down. So that's two members for nothing coming in favor of Volume Zero, as well as the level 16 talent lead. Um, this is at least going to be bottom keep coming out in favor of Gaytez Gaming. Or not in favor of Gaytez Gaming, rather, in favor of Volume Zero. I'll we'll have to wait and see whether or not they turn it into anything else. Thing 1 applying a lot of pressure, using that death from above town to 13 to jump onto any target that's unsuspecting. Especially when you add the damage from Assassinate. This is very similar to the build that the pros have been going as of late. To just apply like mass, uh, massive initiation pressure. So it is bot keep going down. Uh, Kalefoss doing his best to uh, help with flame strike, And we do see right there kind of an example of how much weaker Varian is. Now that Wolfbringer was changed. He managed to initiate on the ETC but without the stun. He was easily able to power slide away. Thing 1 going deep. Has Smoke Bomb available. Will he be able to kill Repulsion? That uh, looks like not quite. Fear on the... Oh, actually I spoke too soon. After Ambush comes off cooldown, Thing 1 jumps in and gets the kill. Uh, we see that uh, despite the fact that they got the kill, <laughs> Lyra has lost connection. Um, I, I'm waiting to see a pause come out from one of the teams. Uh, okay, a uh, pause does come out. Uh, luckily for them, they're not really in a position where it was really affected that much. There's, I've noticed there's been a lot of DCs as of late. I'm coming in and cheerleading. I don't know if people are just playing on McDonald's internet or what the problem is. And so we'll take just a moment here. Uh, waiting for things to get back into into the swing. Got to wait for the reconnect. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we'll take a quick a quick inventory of what exactly is going on. We see the keep going down, uh, taken out by Volume Zero, who's been doing an excellent job of just punishing people for being out of position with the amazing uh, Wombo combo, having ETC Power Slide, follow-up CC by Valera, easy route from Malfurion, and just all of the damage coming out. A good play so far. I also actually really like the choice of initiative on Valera. That's personally my favorite level 4 talent. Uh, for Valera because of how much easier it makes it to get a three-point Eviscerate, uh, especially when you consider that you want to be trying to get that combo off as quickly as possible before the CC runs out. So the fact that you can uh, jump in, uh, use one of your abilities, gain two points, Blade Flurry to Eviscerate instantly and get that full Eviscerate value without having to worry as much about running out of energy is really nice. We also see the Thistle T for extended team fight, so kind of a mixed build coming in from Valera, just making sure that uh, she's never out of position without the ability to escape because of not having enough mana for Sinister Strike. So uh, good, good play all around on both sides. We do look like that most of the ultimates are down for Volume Zero, uh, which is probably why they are currently running away. Uh, realizing that they don't have the ultimates. It's really too early to try to play too aggressively. Uh, the rest of the web weavers have been cleared, so there's nowhere else to really push for value. So they're just going to disengage, probably head back, get their bruiser. Don't have enough gems for a turn. They could also be uh, eyeing boss in the near future, however. So uh, lots of options here uh, for volume zero. So it looks like uh, thing one has returned. I'm asking if the teams are ready. So uh, Volume Zero is good to go. Uh, Gaytez Gaming is good to go as well. We see the countdown and we are back in the thick of things. So uh, 
Let's see whether or not... Okay, so we do just see a little bit of pressure coming out from a Jurassic trying to have the dismount, clearing the way before they go, just trying to get that EXP. Over three levels in favor of Volume Zero was just a uh, level 12 to level 13 a few minutes ago. It's really already changed this much, which really started with the uh, strong initiate here. And it's actually something that's really surprising to me is if we... Uh, that I don't know. It's just it, it was a really solid play. I would expect um, them to have like a better sense of where the people are. Maybe having someone scout. Uh, usually, I'll just take a quick peek top into the other. Basically, getting a boss for free here. But what I was trying to mention is that usually in these certain, it's a little more difficult on this map, um, just because you don't expect the enemy to initiate through this corridor a lot of the time. Is that the job of the tank when you're taking camps is not actually to help tank the camp a lot of the time. Usually they don't really have the damage, especially if you have someone like a variant who has self sustain, so you don't need to do it for the peel. The tank should be in between you and where the enemy would come from. So that minor misplay turned into a huge advantage in favor of Volume Zero, who even though they are pushing against a Web Weaver wave, did manage to get the boss for free and are now pushing in into another keep. Uh, thing one going ham onto the Kael'thas. Power slide doesn't connect. Mosh Pit does, however, ends up getting silenced by the Wailing Arrow. A lot of pressure, actually. Good counter engage from Gaitez Gaming, but it may not be enough. Uh, the keep taking a lot of damage from the boss. Uh, thing one playing really aggressively. Their keep is going to go down regardless. So good attempt there from Gaitez Gaming to get some kills out of it. But the disengage was just too strong from Volume Zero, and they were able to get out unscathed. And so that's going to be another keep uh, going down in favor of Volume Zero when they were pushing against Web Weavers, which is not at all good for Gaitez Gaming. They've got to try to get some value out of this. I like the decision to push mid, uh, to push mid lane, um, even though they don't have the Web Weaver there. The other way, uh, way the other waves aren't going to get a lot of value either. Bot and Top are now both pushing against Catapults. They've actually just fallen back since Varian was top lane, and uh, the three level leap persists. They are about to hit 16, but. Volume Zero is just a moments away from hitting 20 themselves, already at level 19. Uh, they're looking for the initiation. Thing One was scouting out again. A good initiation there. Uh, Burrow Charge is enough to help them get away. Phoenix comes out to disengage. And maybe I can't blame Gatez Gaming too much. I didn't see the Valir there either until the Cheap Shot came out, but... A really amazing play right now from Thing One. I don't know if it would work at all levels, but just doing a really good job of being sneaky and roguey and really getting him applying pressure to the back line. We see Ejindra has gone all in. Does not have his ultimate though, it's taking a lot of damage. Pint, however, is uh, caught by Thing 1. He's getting low on health. Earth Shield coming out on, or Lightning Shield coming out on Pint. Thing 1 trying to kill, does not quite get the kill on Pint. Barely has any health left, the Ancestral is good. But that being said, we see that Ejindra was having some troubles of his own. He goes down in the bot line. RVLO ends up dying as well to the ambush. And things are not looking good for Gaitez Gaming. This could be it in favor of Volume Zero if they manage to get a couple more picks. Don't quite have 20 yet. Still about half a level away. Are they going to try to capitalize on something? Still 11 gems away from getting a turn in. Um, looking for, I guess, taking the Bruiser Camp. Just getting as much EXP and value as they can. Don't really have the means to seal the game yet. It's still too early. The cooldown timers are too late. But just here we are again. Thing one just kind of lurking in the corner. Are they going to go? Are they going to go for a kill? Uh, it looks like she's just uh, focused on scouting. Helps clear the wave a little bit, and things are resetting a little bit to neutral. But we see right here, 20 right around the corner. The volume zero is hit. Let's see what talents they decide to go with. So we see Night Slayer coming in for Valera, having the decreased cooldown, making it so that she can turn invisible every five seconds down from eight. Uh, Death Metal from ETC, so instead of going something like Bolt of the Storm to help the initiate, he's realized that his power slides have been sufficient, and he's going to use Death Metal so that if he does go down, he can get value out of it. Uh, Volume Zero was able to get enough gems for the turn in, so they're going to be looking at the core here. They're level 20, two keeps already down. Uh, looks like they might be posturing to take the mid one as well, just for good measure. We see, if you look at the minimap, it looks like three catapults pushing in the top lane. And so Gaitez Gaming is in a tough spot right now. They really kind of have to split their focus if they want to prevent damage from falling on the core. Echo Corruption, now that um, it has been completed, is doing a lot of damage to the back line, even through uh, the dampened magic and spell armor of a Nubarak. And we'll see what other level 20 talents we are. So we see Haunt, um, not at all surprising, coming from Gul'dan, increasing the duration and granting vulnerability. Uh, initiation on the Rhaegar from Thing 1. Is he dead? Yes, he is! Man, this Valera play has been ridiculous so far. Uh, really showing the potential of the character. Uh, here comes the Fear. Fear in the Mosh Pit! Amazing combo! <laughs> the Unstoppable also prevents the Tornado. Wow, at the very end of the game here. 
We see amazing synergy coming out from Volume Zero. Fearing into the Mosh Pit, the cleanse to prevent. I didn't see if Twisting Nether, or uh, no, that's not the name of the ability. Or maybe it is. It doesn't matter because Kael'thas is dead. Um, Kael'thas' E uh, may have been a little off target, but it also looked like the cleanse from Malfurion was enough to stop it. So amazing play coming out from Thing 1 on Valera. Definitely MVP, but as you saw in that last fight, uh, overall just amazing job from the members of Volume Zero. Um, it started out as a fairly even fight, but uh, Gaitez Gaming just started having a lot of difficulty uh, dealing with just staggering deaths one after another because of all of the initiation. So, uh, good match coming in from both teams, but that is going to be the game going over to Volume Zero. So, that is going to be it for me tonight. Uh, thank all of you for coming out, or if you're watching the VODs, thanks for tuning in. I have been your host, Verdstrom. Uh, that is going to be it for now, but I will be back tomorrow uh, to cast some Division Three Chair League games, I believe beginning at 6 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Central. Uh, there's a possibility one of those might have to get dropped due to a time conflict. Uh, so if you really want to know, just drop a follow, check out my profile on Chair League just to make sure. But regardless, it's been a pleasure hosting all of you, and that is going to be it. So I will see you next time.